Hey YouTube, this is Jeremy Apple Leafs. Um, I am making a video in response to Robbie Battle. Robbie, um, this video is for you. Hopefully it will benefit other people as well. I'm hoping it's helpful. Really hope it's helpful. Anyways, um, you were asking me um, a question about if someone is finds themselves going back and forth in what they believe and what they think and um, they're dealing with um, whether it's confusion um, caused by teachings from the various people that are teaching about scripture and um, a lot of times they're contradictory teachings and scripture itself can be uh, somewhat confusing um, especially when from what I've seen that there's um, um, there's at least, oh, like 16 verses in the KJV that are spurious, they don't belong. Um, they've later been found to be erroneous verses, they shouldn't be there, there's like 16 of them. Um, and then there's even the story of um, the adulteress, when the adulteress is brought to Yeshua. Um, that whole uh, 12 verses, I believe, is spurious. That story is an extra later edition. So, um, even scripture itself. And then if you look at, um, say, the Greek, Brit Hadashah, New Testament, New Covenant, um, the word that they use to try and prove the virgin birth from Yeshayahu or Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, they mi it's misquoted. They don't quote it accurately. They say virgin when the Hebrew word is Alma, means young woman. Um, and it says this young woman is pregnant in the Greek, it says that this woman will be pregnant, so they change the tense of the verb, they get the verb wrong, they get the whole, they misunderstand um, what Emmanuel means. Um, in the Hebrew, Emmanuel means, El is with us. El is with us. In the Greek, they say that it means, El with us, or Theos with us, God with us, whatever. Um, so yeah, there's, there's multiple things that are, um, difficult in scripture and then when you have all the people that are trying to um, interpret it um, and they're using erroneous Bible translations there's there's a ton of uh, mistranslations in most Bible they say um, eternal in the Tanakh what people call the Old Testament the word there does not mean eternal it means stretching beyond the horizon um, a time that goes beyond what you can know. It's beyond end in sight. There's no end in sight. It could be lasting 10 minutes. It could be lasting 10,000 years. There's just no end in sight, so there's no way to know. Um, and then they say eternal in Brit Hadashah, the new, new Covenant, New Testament. And it, the word that's used there does not mean eternal. It means an age or age-related or having to do with an age. And again, an age is um, an undetermined period of time. So, and then, of course, they say hell, and, and hell is really just means a hidden place. So, a hole in the ground that's covered over is a hell because it's a hidden place, and that's all it is. Um, they say hell for Gehenna, and it's the Valley of Hinnom. It's just a trash dump. It's a burning trash dump, and that's all it is. Um, there's multiple uh, mistranslations, misperceptions. Um, so, I sympathize with you. As far as like going back and forth with what you believe or what you see, um, I think that's common for a lot of people. Um, and I think that the Creator has made it that way for numerous people, and maybe yourself included, I'm not sure, but um, when you are going back and forth, I see that, personally, I see that it could be the Creator when He hammers you, because He's it's, it's like we're um, on his anvil and he's hammering us into shape. So the things that you go through in life are hammering you into shape. So going back and forth with your beliefs could be the creator hammering your faith, hammering your um, trust into shape. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that it's probably never um, come to a finality, never come to a conclusion. And if it hasn't, um, that means he's still hammering away. That's that's what I see anyways. Um, but just because he's hammering away doesn't mean all is lost by any stretch of the imagination. I know it can be frustrating, and I'm really sorry if it is frustrating. Um, 
this whole world, this whole life, and at least my experience, this whole world and life is frustrating to me. Very frustrating, very frustrating, so much of the time. Um, but I just want to encourage you. Um, I hope that you don't give up hope. I hope that you don't get too frustrated. Um, I hope that you're able to persevere. As far as I'm concerned, and from what I know, the Creator loves you. The Creator is not going to stop loving you. The Creator understands. The Creator um, knows all these things, knows your path, knows every step you've ever taken, has purposed all of it, and has good in store for you. My camera's being funky. Sorry. Um, so, he has good in store for you. Um, we, I mean, everybody, like, is struggling in this life. I mean, I know that you probably know this, but I'm just saying it. Um, I mean, everybody struggles. There's confusion all over the place. All over the place, there's confusion. Um, and I think that the Creator has purposed it for His reasons. I think the primary thing that you can do is trust. Trust Him. Um, now, I mean, I pronounce His name Yi Wei. Other people pronounce it differently. Like I said, I think the thing that's important is what His name means. His name means He exists, the self-existent one. And it has to do with His, his character and identity and what His name means. I think is the important thing. I'm, I'm not hung up on the um, pronunciation. I mean, I, I'm, I've come to a, at least a temporary conclusion the way I pronounce it, but I don't think it's, you know, if you pronounce it a little differently, I don't think that's really that big a deal. Um, but I think getting the meaning of his name is more important. Um, but the self-existent one loves you and has good in store for you. I'm assured of this. I mean, it, there is difficulty in life, I know. I mean, everybody's got it, you know, um, to varying degrees at various times. But he's going to see us all through. Um, he's going to see us all through. And he loves you, and I'm sorry for the confusion, because I know there's a ton of it. Not that it's my fault, I just sympathize. Um, But um, there has to be a creator, because if you go to the origin of everything, where does everything come from? Where does it come from? Why is um, the universe intelligible? Why are there laws? Why do things fit? There are a lot of things that fit. Why do they fit? Why should there be mathematics? Why? 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 The only conclusion that I come to with all these questions is there has to be the creator has to be. Has to be. There's no way around it, at least as far as I can see. I've never, from anybody, I've never heard a satisfactory answer. Um, and to me, it comes down to um, either there is a creator, or either there is no creator, life is pointless. If you can, if life is enjoyable for you, great. If you find life is worse off for you than not, then why live? Um, but, I don't advise that because that's that's option number one, that you live, you suffer, and you die, and that's it. Option number two, the creator, there is a creator, there is an all-powerful being, and he's actually malevolent. He's actually evil. He's your enemy, and things just are going to suck for you, and if you might happen to have it good, um, if it might turn out good in the end for you, great, but... Who knows, and, um, okay, if it's either the Christian or Islamic creator, then most people have a, a hard, difficult life, and then they have horribleness to look forward to. And that's a malevolent creator. That's an evil deity, evil god. Um, and then you have the option that the Creator is actually good, that there's actually good reasons for all of the awfulness we see in the world around us and all this confusion. And everything will actually turn out good, even though there's a lot of difficulty now. Those are the only options I can see. Um, either no Creator, the Creator is malevolent, or the Creator is actually good. I see that the Creator is actually good. That's the conclusion I've come to. Um, and I try to go over that in various videos, but, um, yeah, part of the proof for me is Yeshua. 
um, because he was like the primary excellent human being and he loved the creator more than anything and he the creator was planning to have him tortured to death and he agreed. He willingly went through with it to be tortured to death after having a relatively short life and trying to do good to people in the face of opposition. He gets tortured to death. But he comes to life again and he is like the cream of the crop. Um, immortality and all kinds of goodness with him after this life. <coughs> after his life here. That's what I mean. Um, so because of that, I see that there is good coming for the rest of us. I hope this helps. Um, I hope this is helpful, not frustrating. Because I uh, hear you when you talk about like uh, confusion, frustration. I mean, if you're referring to any of that, that's what I see all over the place. So frustrating. And it's like, um, what do you have to be in? super intelligent to figure all this crap out. You know, even all the intelligent people, they don't get it a lot of times. And they think they're so smart. And nothing against them. I'm just like, intelligence is not the answer for this this kind of stuff, as far as I can tell. Um, but they've got good coming to them, just like the rest of us. So that's, that's my conclusion. Um, I hope this is helpful. I would say, um, if you feel like you're going back and forth, just know that it's probably the Creator hammering away on you, um, shaping your trust, your faith, um, and making it how He wants it to be. And you are not out of His hands, no matter whether you believe in Him or not. And He loves you, He's got good in store for you. Um, but He also is like, you know, the diff He has difficulties for this life. It's like a training period, at least as far as I can tell. Um, but, but all of, you know, any of the confusion, he's not, he, you're never out of his hands and it doesn't rely on you. It's not up to you. It's up to him and he loves you and he's going to see you through. And there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, you can try and go along with the process and try and, like, do right and good. And that will m probably make the process easier because then you're not going to have to get corrected as much. But... It's going to happen, and he's, he's going to do with you what he's planning to do with you, regardless of what you believe, regardless of what you think or understand. So, um, if that's any kind of reassurance, uh, yeah, so, if, um, please, if, if, um, if you don't just want me to shut up, but would it, is, this is actually helpful. If there's anything else you'd like me to touch on, I would happily uh, respond further, make another video if you want. Um, but I hope it's helpful. And shalom, everyone. Um, I hope all of my brothers and sisters, which includes all of humanity, I hope you're all doing very well. And I hope you keep from wrong and from wronging each other. All of us wronging each other, that would be nice. I know it's part of the trial and testing that we have to learn and grow with this stuff, but that's my preference is for us to do right by each other. So I hope good, I hope and pray good in your life and good for your day and your night and um, lots of shalom, which means wholeness. It does mean peace, but it also means like wholeness, being whole, being a whole, complete, healthy person. And healthy is in not just physically, but um, and not just emotionally or mentally, but your whole being. Healthy in your core. In your core. So, thank you for watching. Shalom. Um, I don't think I'm forgetting anything. Slan. Can't remember how to say the last part. Slan. Um, adios. Bonjour. Hey, da, I think. Um, Arrivederci and uh, dosvidanya. Nihao.